Hello, my name is Cheryl Wilson, and if you're coming back to my channel, thank you so much for trusting me again for another short time to talk. And if you are new, I talk about abstract art, I do some paintings, and talk about some techniques and concepts, and kind of just let you follow along with me in my journey as, um, as an artist. But there's been something that's been on my mind that I have been putting together and it's it's common sense but it's something that really helps me create as an artist and where this came about was um, I have a collector that periodically well every single time they buy a painting they want to know what I was thinking when I painted that painting what um, inspired me and it, this is twofold because sometimes I do sit down and paint a painting with a, uh, a mindset a frame of mind based off of something happening in my life maybe a current event um, especially if it is a part of a series but there are other times I just create because that's what is in my heart. It's um, it's intuitive. It's I, I don't even know what I'm going to create when I start painting. I'm in tune with my feelings, but I'm not writing down my feelings to understand if my feelings are inspiring what strokes I'm putting on the canvas. But it has made me look at what I'm feeling, what I'm inspired by when I'm painting a canvas, especially since this is a question that is asked of me a lot. Now there's times when I um, will paint when I'm um, really happy. I'm listening to uh, the cello um, music or Puccini or Hauser or you know, happy mood. There's even been times when I've attacked a canvas when I've been angry and created some really uh, dynamic pieces or I've been emotional. And that's all a part of us as artists because we do create when we have um, um, our different moods because that's, you know, we're people. But I'm a very much of an empath. So I feel feelings very deeply. And I think that's why sometimes when I go in my art room, I deliberately don't let feelings dictate what I'm putting on the canvas because sometimes I just want to create. And then there's other times that um, feelings are so powerful that they do come through to the canvas. So what I want to talk to you about today is the responsibility, I guess, we have as artists to um, explain what feelings or what inspires us in our artwork. And the, this is just my thoughts, my thoughts only. And I've asked my dad, who I trust a lot, who's a musician, and he does paint, but he's been a musician. I mean, he is an incredible. He's 94. You've heard me talk about him before. But when he was 16, he picked up a brass instrument and could play it. And he played a trumpet. In fact, I have his trumpet that he first got when he was 16. And then he picked up the French horn and he could play that. Of course, he had to take lessons to um, become professional. And that's... He was a professional, or he is a professional, in um, as a um, artist, a, mu a musician, and he, now he plays the cello. And I've asked him this same thing because when he looks at my art, he asks me the question: Am I supposed to see something, a figure, or something in your art? And I told him no. I, in fact, I almost rather people don't but then this is where the conversation that I wanted to bring to you comes about where does my responsibility as an artist end 
on my abstracts. I feel when I paint, and I am wearing my one of my painting shirts, um, so you will often see me talk in my painting shirt because I start the day knowing I'm going to go and paint in the studio. But as an artist, when I paint on my canvas and I put everything I've got into a painting, and when I'm done and I sign, and even sometimes after I sign, before I send that piece of artwork to my um, to the online gallery or my my shop, my store, uh, my website, etc. Um, I have deemed that painting done as far as where I am in that creation. But what happens next when that painting is bought or a paint a collector has um, purchased the painting and they've put it in their home? It's this magical next step with that painting. It becomes out of my creation. My job is done. It now becomes their creation. And what I mean by that, it's it's what they're thinking, what they see. I have one gentleman who is a dancer, professional dancer, and he has one of my paintings as he walks down the stairs and he sent me comments periodically. I think he's had the painting maybe four years and he still sends me emails saying how he feels when he sees the painting. He connected with that painting when he first saw it. And since then, it's his connection. It's his feelings. It's his world. How he feels when he looks at that painting every day that he walks past it, down the stairs and into his, his day to get started. That's beyond me as an artist. I did my job when I created it and signed my name and handed it over to him as a collector. It's his story now. Sure, my story counts because it's in the painting, but it's the collector's story. It becomes their world. Their, um, sometimes if they're sad or emotional, it becomes something to cheer them up. Or if it reminds them of an event or someone, that's what they think about. It's not me as the artist anymore. And sometimes I don't even want to name my paintings because I think that my, my naming the painting gives it a part of its next world and I want it to go into the next world to the to the person who's the collector, the person who owns it, I want it to go there and live its story beyond me as the artist. And I was wondering what you felt about that because one of my other collectors actually has a wall and she said she would, she, she shared it with me this weekend. And she's collected from me for seven years or more. When I first started, she's one of the first that bought a piece and some of the pieces that she has in this story wall, it starts from a connection she had with one of my blue landscapes. It was a seascape. And it goes on to um, a painting I have called I Have Scars. And then I don't want to tell the whole story. It's her, her story. But she has visual sayings throughout the wall that connect. And as she was sharing this wall with me, I just cried because I felt I had a part in helping her build a wall that she connects with and looks at every day, she says, and it speaks to her. And even though I told her the story behind the, each one of those pieces that I created. I could hear in her voice from her story how she took upon the one painting that says, I have scars. She 
put it where it was on the wall and described it to me based on her feelings, based on her scars, her story. And that's, I think the thing that's the most exciting for me as an artist is the collectors that have collected my paintings have connected with something within the story of the painting that's their story. And that means so much to me as an artist. And I, I'm thrilled for that. And maybe it's not so much in realism, maybe it's more in abstracts. I don't know, I can only speak for abstracts. But I wanted to share that with you because it is so powerful to me to share the story of a creation from the inspired strokes and heart of an artist and then the path that painting takes to the story and the inspiration and heartfelt everyday thoughts from the person who has collected the painting and how they feel uh, from their perspective. It was a very powerful um, mindset story for me and I wanted to share that with you and I'd love to hear your thoughts on from the artist perspective and then those that listen to this that are a collector what are your thoughts on this thank you for joining me and um, I do hope to carry a dialogue on this and I hope to put more thought into this um, for a future video because there's so much more than even what I've even expressed. <laughs>